with the push and the pull up. Maggie Lucas. She gets it out, she goes. She sees the floor, I know, stop the puck. Penn State leads wire to wire. And they will take over sole possession of first place in the Big Ten. Well, Penn State came out and made a statement. They needed this win to get back into first place in the Big Ten. They did it with their defensive effort. They were aggressive at the onset of the game. This is a Penn State team who has grown, who has matured. When things aren't going well offensively, they can now rely on that defense. Moment and then picked up by Taylor. Alex Bentley, Maggie Lucas, the leaders of this team, helped get them to another level from a competitive standpoint. They are dominant at home. They are looking to take the Big Ten and run away with this first place opportunity right now. And I just think this is Penn State team is awfully, awfully tough to beat when they have that balance inside, outside, when they have two of the toughest competitors in the league. I'm Stephanie White, a women's basketball analyst with the Big Ten Network, and you're watching Courtside with Coquise. Welcome, everybody. It's a new week and a new episode of Courtside with Coquise. Got a lot of fantastic things to share with you, including a one-on-one -on -one with Alex Bentley and Maggie Lucas. Highlights from this week's games. But first up, we're gonna take you to Hershey Medical Center, where we'll get an up-close look at our Pink Zone funds at work. We're here to, you know, get a little bit of a tour of the uh, hospital. We have a scholarship here that we give to the cancer center. We're just gonna go and walk around and maybe meet some patients. So we're really excited to do that. Uh, this is to relax the patients and make them feel comfortable. And, uh, this is awesome. I'm the medical director of the Breast Medical Oncology uh, Unit. I take care of patients, I administer chemotherapy, prescribe chemotherapy, take care of patients in the hospital and also do research. We're here just visiting with some patients right now. Um, it's really nice to stop in, sign some posters for them, uh, talk a little bit, and hopefully, uh, you know, help the time go a little quicker for them while they're getting their treatment. Nice to meet you. It's Aaliyah. I'm doing pretty good. So Wanted to say hi. Candace. Wish you a happy new year. Oh, you're doing very well. Mm -hmm. You guys are the same kind of here. It was wonderful that they took their time to come and visit us. Oftentimes, the time that you spend in here goes very slowly. The fact that they took their time from practice and everything, and um, I really appreciate that very much. Well, this is an awesome opportunity for us to come to the Hershey Medical Center and to interact with patients and encourage them in the battle that they're facing, um, as well as be able to understand a little bit more about what it is that our Pink Zone game is doing. Thank you. Have a good day. I hope it goes by quick. It's been awesome to be in here. It's, it's real. We know what we're playing for, so you know when the Pink Zone game comes up, we're reminded of um, you know what exactly we're doing, why we're playing this game. But it's been an awesome experience to be in here and see um, where where the funds are going. So. And we're going to talk about breast cancer today and yeah, breast cancer prevention. So we need to do exercise. We need to have the right nutrition. We need to quit. If you smoke, you gotta quit. So keep lean and keep moving around. And whatever exercise you do, keep doing it. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa, I brought the whole girls team for you. All day, ladies, all day. My name is Lisa Courtright. I am one of the registered nurses here on the PSCI inpatient unit. It's being there for the patient because they're dealing with a illness and a disease and many times just listening to them, giving them support, encouragement, definitely takes the edge off of uh, working here sometimes to have people stop in and um, make appearances. <laughs> Mark your calendars for Pink Zone at Penn State, 1 p.m. Sunday, February 24th at the Bryce Jordan Center. More information is available at gopsusports.com backslash pink zone. Here's a look at what's trending now in Lady Lion basketball. 
Penn State is currently ranked eighth in the nation in the AP Top 25 poll and is number nine in the USA Today Coaches Poll. They've held on to a top 10 ranking all season long. With the victory over Purdue earlier in the week, the Lady Lions now have pushed their home court win streak to 17 games. That's the fourth longest active streak in NCAA Division I basketball. It's hard to believe, but there are three home games remaining this season. That's only three more chances to see seniors Alex Bentley, Nikki Green, Mia Nixon, Giselle Studevant, and Marissa Wolf in the Bryce Jordan Center. Your next chance to catch the team in action is this Sunday, February 10th at 2 o'clock against Michigan State. It's a big game on the court, and there'll be plenty to do before, during, and after the game. There'll be a National Girls and Women in Sports Day clinic hosted by several of the Penn State women's teams before the game. It's also Alex Bentley Wind-Up Walker Day with a full team post-game autograph session. More game info is available at gopsusports.com. And don't forget to wear white. That's what's trending now. For more, check us out on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Penn State WBB, or on Instagram at Penn State Lady Lions. Just ahead, we look at the only two Big Ten teammates who were named to the John R. Wooden Award midseason list, Alex Bentley and Maggie Lucas. You court size. I'm Alex Bentley. Bentley with a shot. It's good for two from the far side. And that's a tough shot by Alex Bentley. I'm Maggie Lucas. Goes one way, then the other. And a left-hand layup up and good. And a blocking foul. She'll go to the line to shoot. And you're watching Courtside with Coquise. Courtside. We're really fortunate here at Penn State to have a roster loaded with talent from top to bottom. And it starts with our backcourt. Alex Bentley and Maggie Lucas are two of the 20 players on the Wooden Award mid-season list. The Wooden Award goes to the National Player of the Year, so to be on that list is a real honor. Let's take a look at Alex and Maggie in action. The thing I love the most about Alex Bentley's game is that she's a competitor. Well, I think the big thing for Alex, you know, is to be a, a facilitator and to be a playmaker. And they get it into Bentley! Alex Bentley, what a move. And I think she's done a terrific job with that, trying to figure out when to score, when to distribute and get everybody else involved, and, and certainly when to pick it up defensively. I, I think her ability to disrupt other teams' guard play out on the perimeter has been essential to their success. Bentley reaches in and comes up with the steal. Bentley drives to the paint. Outside the paint is good. Wraparound pass is stolen by Bentley. Bentley on Standish. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Bentley hesitates, takes it down low, off the glass, and good. So she's just one of those players who enjoys enjoys playing the game, and, and that's contagious. Bentley hesitates. Bentley knocks it away. Two seconds. Bentley's going to let it fly from midcourt. How about if this goes in? Oh, it did! Oh, my goodness! Can you believe it? Alex Bentley, point guard, senior, Indianapolis, Indiana. The evolution of Maggie Lucas has been a lot of fun. You know, she is a player who definitely is the triple threat. She's got a lot of options offensively, and she's done such a good job of understanding how to read how the defender's playing her. Lucas, another block shot. Maggie Lucas broke her ankles and then knocked it down from deep. Three-point shot near wing on the way. Good! Maggie Lucas, one of the most prolific three-point shooters, leading the nation in three-point field goal percentage. Down the lane with the left hand, good. But she can take it off the bounce as well. Nice defense by Lucas, comes up with another steal. In Bentley Lucas, can she get a three-pointer to fall? There it is, and the fans react as does Maggie. Will take the quick three-point shot and knock it down. She knows she's got to work extra hard to get herself open. I think she's certainly headed in the right direction. Maggie Lucas, shooting guard, junior. Narberth, Pennsylvania. They've got great chemistry on and off the court. And when you get those two together, anything can happen. I'm sitting here with Maggie Lucas, and the fans want to know a little bit more about her, so I'm here to get some insight. Three-point shot on the way and good. So, Mags, who's your favorite lady lion on the team? Well, I love them all very much, but 
probably Alex Bentley. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> thank you. I do thank love you. her. I do love her. Trick question, because I already knew the answer. What's your ideal perfect practice? When we scrimmage a lot, it's good. Mm -hmm. Spot up shots are a lot of fun too. Of course, shooting. Yeah. But and really just a lot of scrimmaging. That's my ideal. Okay, what do you like to do in your spare time? I might like to watch movies, just chill with the lady lions, of course. We're not playing basketball, we're pretty much just chilling. Okay. If you could have one wish in the world, one wish that would come true, what would it be? I would wish that I could have a puppy on campus with me that I could have. <laughs> <laughs> she loves loves dogs. It's crazy. Bentley penetrates to the elbow, pull up jumper on the way and good. She had her chance to ask a few questions, so now I got a few for her. First off, a lot of people may not know you have a huge movie collection. What's your favorite little kid movie? Um, I absolutely love Thumbelina. <laughs> All right, what is your absolute favorite thing to do at Penn State? Absolute favorite thing to do is definitely play basketball games in the Bryce Jordan Center. That's what I live for, and that's what I am focused on just about every single day. What is your favorite moment as a Lady Lion so far? Favorite moment as a Lady Lion? I actually have two favorite moments, okay? Um, one would be definitely winning our Big Ten championship. Um, amazing experience. My second favorite moment would definitely be Pink Zone of last year. Me and Co had a moment after the game, <laughs> but Pink Zone game always gets me fired up and ready to go. And finally, what is our song we sing to each other when we say goodbye? All right, we're Ready? gonna sing me and Maggie's song. Ready? Ready? One, two, three. Adios, hasta luego. Hasta la vista. Adios, adios, hasta mañana. Ciao. <laughs> My name's Mike Miller, Director of Video and Technology Operations, and coming up, meet the operations staff. Let's meet our operations staff. These guys are the team behind the team and help make the Lady Lions go, especially when it comes to travel, and video and technology operations. My name is Ethan Gelfand and I'm the Director of Basketball Operations. My job is to kind of take care of everything behind the scenes. Ethan is Director of Operations, which operations for him literally means everything. I take care of the logistics, so when we hit the road, that's all on me. Essentially that's my game time in the sense that I make all the travel preparations, whether it be organizing the bus, making the plane arrangements. Heat uses Miami Heat use the plane. Lady Lions use this plane. I have so much room I can't even reach to put my backpack down. I got my feet up and laying down. What do you think, I am loving it. It's got a blanket, it's got a pillow back here. It's so comfortable. Kind of all that stuff that you really don't think about when you think of a team just going on the court and playing a game, but you know, that's, that's what I do, and I want to make sure everyone else is taken care of so they can focus on what they need. I'm Mike Miller, and I'm the Director of Video and Technology Operations for Lady Lion Basketball. All the video that we have, all the scouring reports that we have, all the highlight films, it's all Mike Miller. Well, I take care of, obviously, the video and tech stuff, so all of our opponent scouting, all of our game recording and practice recording, those type of things. I also take care of our Nike equipment and our practice guys. What's special about this team is that they're such a cohesive unit, not only on the court, but off the court as well. I've never seen such a cohesive team on all aspects of being a student athlete. And I think that really translates well onto the court. You see it when Alex makes the behind the back pass to Maggie, or when Ariel makes the drive. They're all just so happy for one another as a team. And, you know, that really translates into success. It's just a very tight knit group and it's just fun to watch, it's fun to be around them every day just because they make it enjoyable. It's been very interesting from my perspective to see it climb and grow each year. Our records has gotten better, our, uh, you know, winning the conference, excelling in the NCAA tournament, all those things you know, statistically have added up and you can see it year in and year out get better. Hopefully this year we add to that, we take that next step, we get better. Um, and so that, that's pretty exciting. It's fun just to come to work every day and see them work and see them put in the time and effort that it takes to put a championship team on the court. And that's what I think we have here. Art is a passion for Nikki, so it should be no surprise what her favorite spot on campus is. Hi, my name is Nikki Green. My favorite spot on campus is the Palmer Museum of Art. Let's take a look inside. This summer, our team took a trip to Europe and we were able to go to the Louvre 
and they had the original piece of this triptych um, in the museum and I really like it. It's really awesome. When you look at different artists, they express a lot about what they're thinking, their feelings, and what they're going through at the time. And for me, it's kind of the same thing and it's, uh, it's relevant to my life because when I draw, I express how I feel or at the time, whatever emotions are going through my head. This piece right here is called Affirmative Action, one of my favorite pieces. To me, this piece means a woman taking on a man's job, um, showing her determination, just like, for example, me playing basketball. Back in the day, it used to be a man's sport. Now you see women dominating the game. Thanks for hanging out with me at my favorite spot on campus. I'll see you at the BJC soon. The Lady Lions secure first place in the Big Ten when Courtside returns. Courtside! I think Coe has done an unbelievable job of, of kind of returning Penn State to national prominence. What we do, what we do well, this is our strength, it's our signature. Recruits look at Coe and, and know that if they go there, they're going to be challenged and uh, they're obviously going to be good and, and have a chance to get to the next level. I think impressive for Coe as a former player in the league. You have a great understanding of what it takes to be successful at the next level. And, and I just think she imparts that on, on her players now. And, and you can see it. You can see their confidence. You can see their, their passion for the game. You can see their, their work ethic. And all those things translate uh, to the next level. This is Cheryl Reeve, head coach of the Minnesota Lynx. And you're watching Portside with Coquise. One of the things that makes sports so intense, mesmerizing, and memorable are the rivalries. And for Big Ten women's basketball, there's no bigger rivalry than Penn State Purdue. The Penn State Lady Lions pick up an absolutely huge victory over the Purdue. I think this is really one of the better rivalries in the conference. Uh, I remember calling this game back in the mid 90s, and there was always something special at stake. It was always some of the best players in the league going head to head and a, just a wonderful rivalry over the years. And I think this is one of the most exciting uh, to have back now that the league is on an uptick again, uh, to have Purdue and Penn State both in the top 15, looking at a two or a three seed in the NCAA tournament in first place on the line, I think it's fantastic. It's fun to see that you come back and these two teams that are competing again for a Big Ten championship, competing again for uh, bragging rights. and. Um, you know, everybody always asked me when, when I was playing at Purdue if Indiana was the rival, and it wasn't. It was Penn State, and, it, and it's really nice to see it back that way. It's going to be one of those rivalries that will continue, yes. When Penn State and Purdue take the court, there's usually a lot on the line. And that certainly was the case this week when we got together to play for sole possession of first place in the conference. We From Bryce Jordan Center in State College, it's eighth ranked Penn State and number 13 Purdue with first place on the line. Our play smart, play together, fight, <coughs> battle, love each other. It is our time. All right, now let's go. Champions on three, one, two, three. Champions. First place in the Big Ten to the winner here tonight in their only regular season matchup. Who's going to pull this one out? Osterello and Green to jump it up. Mattingly in the center circle. Puts it in the air. Penn State controls the tip. This is Lucas, number 33 in white. She'll take it into the lane and the high arcing shot for two. For rebounding. The circle double team goes right around Hauser and lays it up and in. Hauser, bad defense that time, and Penn State uh, found a clear lane. No post player for Purdue is there to help. Or cut Mingo gets around her defender, lays it up and in. The lead is back to four, 13 to nine, 12 and a half to play first half. Really good energy. Lucas drives baseline, shot clock at three. Lucas pull up is good. 20 to 12, 8.04 to play. Midway point of the season between these two teams. It's seven and one in league play. 
Down low to East. East lowers her shoulder, puts it up over Osterello, and good. Strong move by Talia East, and Penn State's lead is five. Let's go. Let's go. Keep working, all right? Keep working. They go far corner to Dara Taylor. Her three-point shot is good. Dara Taylor with five points now, a big 39 to 28. Hauser, Hauser drives, puts it high off the glass and good. Comes Bentley, has a head of steam, down the lane, lays it up and in, nobody ready. She caught him sleeping and she lays it up and in. Bentley again, there she is coming off that high ball screen and so good on the play. Pass into Talia East, off the glass and good, a special play. Dara Taylor gets the assist. Bentley pull up jumper at the free throw line. Oh, the skip, Wilson for three. Lucas with the push and the pull up. Maggie Lucas. Think she gets it out, she goes. She sees the floor, I know, stop and pop. Penn State leads wire to wire. And they will take over sole possession of first place in the Big Ten. That's a great win. That's a great win. And, and that's the kind of fight we're going to have every night. We go to Indiana. You know, they just played Purdue last Thursday and gave them a go. You know, gave them a go. A 10 and 12 Indiana Hoosier team up against an 18 and 3 Penn State Lady Lion team. And she responds. First shot is good, and Bentley from three has three. Another triple try, and it's 6 0 Penn State. Here, side tries to get around. McGee does, takes it down the lane, high off the glass, and good. Maggie Lucas with the drive. Dara Taylor looking to go off the bounce and a whistle. What a difference maker she is for this team. But with Taylor, all of a sudden the defense, you're just so much more dynamic. Edwards puts it on the floor, pull up jumper in the lane, high arcing shot by Edwards is good. Green from East goes around the screen, goes down the lane. Mia Nixon in the lane, pull up jumper on the baseline, hangs on the rim and falls. Miller recognizes, gets it to East. East muscles it inside with the left hand up and good. What impressive half for Penn State. A seven point Lady Lion advantage here after the first 20. It's a 40 minute game. Now it's 0 0. Okay, we got to execute. Yeah. Defensively, contest shots with your hands up. Move when the ball moves. On offense, move the ball, be creative. And McGee going one on three. Nikki Green with the block. And now Nikki Green has 200 blocks in her career. Over 1,000 points, over 900 rebounds in the 200 blocks now, the only player in Penn State history. So 19 and three now for Coquise Washington and the Lady Lions improving to nine and one in the Big Ten and a fourth straight win. Plus 22 on the bar. Yeah. This is a good win. Indiana's a, it, it is, a, is a tough, scrappy team. They're a tough, scrappy team. They haven't given up 70 points to anybody all season. And that was the last game they played. Good job, y'all. Next up, the Lady Lions are back home for a nationally televised contest Sunday, February 10th at 2 o'clock against Michigan State. It's National Girls and Women in Sport Day with a full team autograph session after the game. It's also another wind-up walker giveaway night. Alex Bentley walkers go to the first 2,000 fans through the BJC gates. Then Penn State heads to Iowa to take on the Hawkeyes. Full schedule, ticket information, news, and more is at gopsusports.com. I'm PJ Mullen. Thanks for going courtside. This has been a production of WPSU. Adios, hasta luego. Hasta la vista. Adios, adios. Hasta mañana. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's like perfect hand on.